Elden Ring can be a game where you use giant weapons and bombastic spells to be an epic, legendary hero. But screw that. Today I'm going goblin mode. The vulgar militia are those little goblins that squeal with delight as they bounce through the air. Usually they get smacked down, but when they work together, they can be really annoying. That's why today I'm going to see if there is strength in numbers and take down all the Remembrance bosses with the vulgar militia. And since you can grab all this gear before fighting a boss, it's basically a secret starting class. To watch these runs live, follow us on Twitch. We're going goblin mode all the time. Join the Patreon to support the channel and get more episodes to binge. There are exclusive videos over there. And finally, make sure you're subscribed. If you're not, you're going to make me so mad I start swearing. Now, let's get vulgar. I want to play a game. We're starting off as a samurai with a traditional militia member name. In their language, that means a friend to all. Kawabunga off a cliff and we're in Limgrave for a crafting kit and a horse. Neat. Strength physic tier is on the way, might as well grab that, and then we can grab a physic flask at the Third Church of America. Ten minutes into the run instead of nine hours. It tastes good. <laughs> we're warping immediately to the Dragon Barrel. Unfortunately, all the vulgar militia equipment is a farmed drop. There are so many saw-wielding militia members here. This is basically saw I love Sawcon. Now, the drop rate for the saw is between 2% and 4%, and y'all know I have had terrible luck farming in these runs. Oh, that was a freebie. Literally the first one. The, the first one dropped it. Let's go. Still need all the armor, but at least we have the weapon. Which also means we have to get naked, per the arbitrary rules I've made for Secret Starting Class as a series. This little dude hangs out close to the Grace by himself, but there's a big group of Gerblins further up the hill. This is an endgame area. We have base Samurai Vigor. It's pretty obvious that we shouldn't fight a big gang. It became obvious to me after they killed us. Three times. After that, I decided to just focus on the one closest to the Grace. Resetting doesn't honestly take that long, and soon we get a second saw. Now, I'm not going to power stance these, and it's not because that wouldn't be canon to the vulgar militia. Yeah, it's because the power stance halberd moveset is terrible. It's really bad. A little bit later, we get the chest piece, the best part of the armor physically. Then a little bit later, we get the gloves, the worst part of the armor physically and aesthetically. Then finally, the headpiece, the best piece aesthetically. I look like a freaking xenomorph or a conehead, an alien of some kind. Have you ever been told you got a weird shaped head? Okay, one final piece, it's the legs. It's a bit breezy between my kneesy, and this one decides to take longer than the rest for whatever reason. While we're doing that in the background, let's talk about the other possible weapon, the Vulgar Militia Showtel. Like the saw, it's a halberd. Unlike the saw, it doesn't have bleed. Instead, it gets to ignore some guarding from blocking enemies. So patches and half the Crucible Knights. One of them is really easy, probably weaker to bleed than it is to, you know, something just hooking around the shield. And the other one, I have no intention of fighting. That's why we're not using it. Back to the farming, we're farming here for two reasons. One, it's probably the fastest path to vulgar militia, but two, each of these little dudes drops around a thousand runes. After figuring out a cycle, they're not even that hard. And there's a route where you can run around and fight a bunch of them in a single run without resetting. I'm not even sure it's all that much faster, but it feels better. Till we got grabbed by one of them, that feels pretty bad. All told, by the time we get our pants, we have 35 vigor for the rest of the game, enough to comfortably trade most of the time. Gotta love that. Let's do some lore reading. From the saw, a weapon comprised of a saw blade attached to a long grip. Brandished by the vulgar militia, its serrated edges is very effective at inflicting blood loss. The saw is said to be used to cut up bodies to feed the militia, but there's no first-hand witnesses to confirm the dire rumor. All right, so they might be cannibals, but can you blame them in this economy? From the sickle, a hooked blade attached to a long handle. Wielded by the vulgar militia, its attacks can slip through an enemy's guard. The vulgar militia are undecorated stewards of rancid, scorched battlefields that none dare approach, and forbidden domains better forgotten by the rest of the world. And from the pants armor and hands, armor worn by the lean, mean, and filthy militiamen, freshly singed battlegrounds effusing with the stench of the dead, forbidden lands that will be excised from the memory of history. This is where the vulgar militia serve as untiring, unsung watchkeepers. And finally, from the head, the upward extension serves to create an appearance of larger size, however slightly. So we're looking at cannibals who hang out in the worst places and wear hats to feel taller. I'm just going to jot that all down and note that wherever we find the vulgar militia spirit ashes, FromSoft is admitting, is the worst place in the entire game. We're done with SawCon. Now, it's time to start goblin. <laughs> Down, 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 down. 
Fort Faroth is right nearby, so let's pop in for the Dectus piece one, then get eaten by rats. Makes sense that they don't get along. Goblins and rats do pretty much the same thing. Goblins just do it in red, and rats do it in black. Maronar run when, am I right? Time to boogie through Lernia, but we don't need to go to school. Obviously, we're just warping through to Bellum. Ever since I started doing it this way, people get in the comments and say, hey, you can just jump to Bellum from the Spirit Spring. I know. I used to do that. This is faster because it unlocks Raya Lucario on the way. You can't please everyone, gamers unless you go to the Raya Lucaria Crystal Tunnel, because everyone loves that. An invincible stone digger drops onto the elevator and we have to beat him off. You what? But his iframes fall off after the first few seconds. Must have been his second stock or something. Crystallion time slash isn't the best damage type, but Crystallion isn't the best boss, so we saw through the rocks. Now you can imagine swearing in Fortite. I guess this means it's time for the top five Fortite YouTubers that have sworn. Number one. Pumpkin head. His favorite swear is butt. Number two, the bloody knight. His favorite swear word is shit because he's number two. I'm not doing the other numbers. The bit has already peaked. Head on up to Aldous and into the sealed tunnel where we get the bell bearing two for enough smithing stones to hit plus 12. But do we have enough runes? Well, I have an idea. Just dig a little bit deeper and get to the Onyx Lord. Might not be the best idea. The song isn't leveled up very high. We haven't invested in our damage stats yet. This is the first real test for the weapon. I didn't expected to do well. It's a common weapon. Halberds are in a middle category between heavy weapons and fast weapons, so they're not all that heavy and they're not all that fast. They're not all that good. Or... So I thought. Turns out, it's heavy enough to interrupt the poise of the Onyx Lord and freely chain him into stance breaks. The damage is also pretty good already, despite the low investment, and since it has bleed, we occasionally get a big chunk of damage. This ends up being a big old bullying session. His blood is white, like the Dolan Bloodborne, which means Garman must have came here. If you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Yeah, now we can get a plus 13 saw, thanks to the extra smithing stone fives from the cave. Sick. And now we have to go to the Ariza Hero's Grave. Again keep having to come back here, and I hate it. Thank God we don't actually have to go that deep in here. Just go around the corner, and there's the vulgar militia ashes. Which means, from Soft admits, Ariza Hero's Grave is the worst. From the ash description, Spirits of the vulgar militia who wield long-hafted, serrated hatchets. These brutal weapons are particularly effective, causing blood loss to opponents. In the lands between, the small were scorned, so they formed the vulgar militia as a means to make a living, albeit in ignominy. Ignominy? They made my boys live in ignominy? A word that I for sure know and have heard before? But just in case uh, you in the audience haven't heard it, ignominy means public shame or disgrace. Grace. Got that one from Miriam Webster. That's like a fextra life for words. So the complete lore picture is that the vulgar militia are short, shamed for it, bullied into taking the worst jobs in the worst places, and occasionally have little of cannibalism as a treat. So goblin pilled, it's gonna make me squee. Heading into the abandoned cave and against the clean rot knights, let's see what they can do. They're not leveled up, and I'm pretty sure they'll just get pushed around more than a Katamari ball. Except, as we handle the first clean rot knight with our saw, they're in the background going to fucking work. Oh, also, we're far enough into the video that swearing is okay. And we can say whatever the hell we want. <laughs> Jizz. Sorry? Jizz. Each one of them has bleed, and they're jumping up to make sure that they're also interrupting a lot of smaller enemies' poise. Remember how the imps pulled their weight super hard in the Nuzlocke run? Imagine that, but there's one more of them, and they're a little more squishy to compensate. Now we're going to be making a bit more money with the Golden Scarab. I'm going to make sure that the Vulgar Militia finally get the respect and compensation that they deserve. I tried getting another saw con going on the dragon's toes, but it seemed like it was going to take like 10 minutes. It's because the saw halberd is still kind of slow. If you want more info on the frame data, Google saw con the dragon's toes 10 minutes on your work computer to find out more. We'll just jump down and fight the putrid avatar instead. Obviously a saw should be great at cutting through wood, right? Not really. They're weaker to strike than they are to slash for some reason. I mean, obviously fire is the best thing to handle them, but strike is the best pure physical option. Oh well. Last week I talked about how this is pretty much a free fight and it's even more free considering we have the boosted vigor from farming earlier. Taking a little bit of time to invest in your vigor at the start of the run makes the whole game so much more fun, seriously. Seems like the saw has some good reach, let's go try it out on Grail just to keep the pickle going. It lasts three minutes so we have three minutes to win. Surely nothing janky will happen like getting stuck in a hole. Oh no step Grail, I'm stuck in the dryer. Oh, what a good goof. This is awful, though. We had to quit out to get unstuck, 
and had lost our pickle bonus. Well, let's go make some more pickles then. First step, buy Spinning Slash, even though it's already our Ash of War. Step two, use Spinning Slash twice on Nerd Juice and make him suffer for being a nerd. Yura doesn't even show up to help. Obviously, as the vulgar militia, we have to just help ourselves. Patches also dies in two spins, and I'm getting a little dizzy. But at least now we have the pickle recipe to get the most out of every boss we fight, like Grail. That's right, this goblin is finally fed up with the dragon. It's time to die. This ends up looking less like a revolution of the exploited lower class, and more like a gnome desperately trying to clean their pet dragon's teeth. We put a saw on a pole blade. Isn't that metal as hell? It looks like a toothbrush. That became really apparent while we were jumping up to hit Grail's mouth. They kept squirming out of the way. Hey gamers, if your toothbrush has this much blood on it, you need to start flossing too. Hate to say it, nobody wants to floss, but coffee, soda, and smoking all lead to gingivitis and can make brushing an unpleasant experience. Get in those gums, folks. It's Grail, though, and it's boss number six. It would have been boss number five if the game got its shit together. Why is there swearing? They didn't! All they said was shoot! Little field trip up to the Weeping Peninsula. Obviously, the sacred tears are nice, but we're here to pop into the grave touched catacombs, just touching it for a second to get the grave glove wart one and two. Then bail. I'm not gonna do a bunch of extra catacombs today. I'm gonna have fun and say swears. Last sacred tier, then bail out and dip into the Caleb catacombs for the grave wart three, four, and five, which means thanks to the six we got from Ariza, we can start running around with these gerblins. These gerblins, they only wanna do one thing. Kissing goblins. Margaret gets his ass kicked so hard, it's just rude. I thought we got an instant bleed on the jump attack, but no, our jump attack just almost does as much damage as the bleed does. Since we have the boosted stance pressure from our physic, we get a stance break, and then the crit has a bleed proc. Oh my god! Wow! Dude says we have passing skill. Bro, you didn't have a phase two, but you said we have passing skill? Gilka also gets bullied and doesn't get to move like I'm not sure she makes an attack. Gostok gets bullied. Then we get bullied on the danger path. That's fine. We kind of earned that. Violence begets violence. But that just means we have to bully Godric. I'm gonna be honest. This is mostly Gerblins. We kept getting hit with strays, but that Spear Dash description says these guys bleed, and it is accurate. There will be blood. They make Godric bleed twice in phase one. What the hell, dudes? His stance sucks by the time we hit phase two, so it's just one crit and then we win. We can also activate the Great Room for plus five to every stat, if I ever remember to turn it on. Oops, forgot to grab the Iron Wet Blade. Currently, we're only leveling our strength, keeping the weapon heavy and cranking strength to do as much damage as possible. Keeps things simple when you're using a simple weapon. Later, we'll maybe switch it up when we have some extra stats to move around. Party time at Red Main Castle. We can't summon the Gerblins for Radon, which sucks. But when you think about it, humans are just tall Gerblins. Gerblins. Okina is probably the best Gerblin because he's also got bleed. Mixing his bleed with our bleed and Radon also doesn't get to have a phase two. We just bully so hard we get to skip so many of these. I gotta ask, is the vulgar militia saw kinda cracked? It's basically just the grave site we used on the Garman run and that sucked. Halberds and Reapers deal the same stance damage, both have bleed and they're about the same speed. Well, one of them was made for farming and one of them is made for murder. Look carefully at it while we're fighting the Red Wolf of Radagon. Notice that the saw sticks out from the stick. The Reaper comes in towards the player, which would be great if I was mowing a goddamn lawn, but because we're trying to kill God and all her kids, I want the stick to be longer. Longer stick is better than curved stick. That's why this horse hog is doing better than my little Pironis from the Garman video. If you get that joke, I am so sorry. And if you don't, Google it on your work computer. If you're a urologist, it wouldn't even be inappropriate. Rinala gets carved up. We don't bring any of these other gerblins out. It's just a saw going super hard. Pop into Radon's hole and get some larval tears for later. Then take off the clothes we spent a whole hour to get because it'll make the mimic bleed faster. He's not part of the vulgar militia union. He's a scab. Can't wait for Saw 11 when he goes after the scabs and the union busters. I'm kind of joking, but Saw 6 is Jigsaw demanding universal healthcare and Saw 9 is basically ACAB Jigsaw, so I could see it. Carry a man or next. Loretta can't bleed, but did you know she also can't move? That's not a joke about how she's stuck to the back of her horse. It's a joke about how aggressive these goblins are. They do not let her move. Say hi to Ronnie, then go light some torches. The Regal Cinema Spirit provides a small speed bump to our bullying strategy by running around, jumping, and overall being kind of a jerk. Just sit still, calm down. I don't know who gave an ancient dead moose god a Red Bull, but how dare you? They are a monster energy family. 
bottoms up. Give Ronnie a knife in case she wants to go goblin mode later and get a statue so we can go goblin mode against Fortisax. Dip into the incel river main, don't need to tell anyone, but the vulgar militia do not belong here. These dudes fuck. Finally remember to put on Godric's great rune, should have done that a while ago. Whoops. And it's time for Estelle with the boys, another one of the bosses we're weak to. I'll be real, the goblins don't do well in AoEs and Estelle has a lot of them. Who cares though, we have plenty of vigor and reach enough that the squirmy nature of this giant space cockroach is no big deal. I don't actually know if the vulgar militia used the cookery, but we did, because we only needed one more hit, and we got these while we were farming goblins, so it should be fine. The gargoyles have 35 slash resistance and can't bleed. There's two of them and they have big AoE attacks. We don't care. I mean the vulgar militia simply don't give a shoot because they say shit, they're vulgar. Y'all, this saw isn't even close to max level. Neither are the militia, but we're just steamrolling. We're rocking a heavy infusion and dumped a ton of levels into vigor. Why is this all going so smooth? Get some free rune arcs from the ants, then it's time for Fia's champs. The first dude and Roger just get sawed in half, but three at the same time is a little too much for the little dudes. Patience is a virtue. After a bit of time, we take out double axe man, and it's a 1v1 against Lionel. Lots of spam, but as long as he doesn't cheat and stop taking damage we should be able to get a safe win you triggered my trap card next attempt doesn't work great actually the worst all of our goblins are toast before you've taken out a single member of the triple gank it's gonna go bad except it doesn't I really don't know how we made it out of there alive, but uh, I'm happy we did. Now the path to the city is open and we can destroy God. What could be more vulgar than deicide? Always beat the Erdtree Avatar, it's just worth it for the extra Lord's Rune. 50,000, it's too good. Ritual Shield Talisman is also always good. Hey, I forgot to grab the second pocket. We've been doing this with just the Ritual Sword Talisman and Golden Scarab. The second one doesn't even help us do damage. How are we so strong? Godfrey Shade can't bleed, but he can be bullied. I was really worried that his Rock Stomp AoE would bust up the boys, but I think there's a few things that help our goblins. They're small, and their hits don't draw aggro as fast because of that. And they... It's a little thing about these three little things, but jumping does help them avoid a lot of attacks. The vulgar militia are four foot nothing point guards who decided they're just gonna dunk anyway because it's cool. Now we get another pocket, which reminds me to go get the other other pocket, but I have nothing to put in it, so um. I like turtles. Turtle Talisman boosts your stamina recovery. It's all right. I dunked on it too much in the Elon video, but it's pretty good. It's not amazing or anything, but it's easier to pick up than something like the Millicent prosthesis. Morgan has been bullied his whole life. Why stop now? Start by bobbing and weaving the daggers. The goblins bleed him as he raises the swords, but I don't like the swords. Stance break. Big old crit. And since the goblins were hacking him up the whole time he was stunned, our charged attack as he stands up makes him bleed again already. Bob and weave through the poop geysers, then get a couple of hits off and wait for the blood flame whiff. Charge spin breaks the stance, and that is a hitless Morga. God, I hope I don't get good enough to just no hit every boss. I would kind of destroy my identity as the worst L Elden Ring creator at the game. I can be your favorite, but I'm objectively probably the worst person making videos consistently. For Biden Land's time, this run is really reminding me how much power the smallest of us have when we work together. If you feel powerless, group up with your fellow workers and seize the means of production with saws. Hey, if you do carpentry, the saws are your means of production. I grabbed a bell bearing three, realizing I forgot to save the runes to level the saw up to plus 18. Whoops, it's just so good already. I forgot it's supposed to get twice as good. Giant Conquering here. Hero's Grave has the Grave Wart our goblins are craving. I think those cannibalism accusations were just anti-worker agitprop. They eat salad, so they're worse than cannibals. They're vegan. We don't get cheesed by the Fire Monk near the Flamethrower, and we make it out with all the Grave Warts we need to max them out. This bird attacks us by the Fire Giant Grace, but then sees we're just trying to sit down and lets us. Thanks for calming down, dude. I'm excited to get your Spirit Ash in the DLC, if that ever comes out. Participating in Capitalism will let us level up the Saw for the Fire Giant. We'll do Phase 1 alone. I can't stand and the idea of our small buddies being crushed by a big boy. Bleed on the toes really makes the fight go faster. If the boss has too much health, just get rid of huge chunks of it at the same time. Now call me Dr. Gordon because I'm taking that foot off with a saw. Are we back to saw con? Phase two, we bring the goblins. It's not like I'm using my mana for anything else. And they did get some hits off, but somehow he gets more mobile by ripping his leg off. I guess Dr. Gordon does too. This is a big win for some whittle buddies. We almost fell in for Amazula. But she did. Max out the goblins and it's time for the gob skin duo. All of my goblins deal slash damage. 
the Godskin duo are weak to slash damage and weak to bleed. Oh, and we brought Bernie, who does extra stance damage while we do extra stance damage from the stance damage physic tier. The Noble does that thing where he like instantly stops rolling, does a combo, then instantly finishes the roll. Imagine if you used rollout in Pokemon and could decide to switch to slash between the turns, then go back to the rollout with all the momentum. That would be silly. This also looks silly. While Bernie and I were handling the big boy, our small boys were handling that small boy and did a great job. It's almost dead by the time Bernie and I get over to it. Then we just bully the rest of them as they spawn in. Hitting them with the sleep pots is the only way to make this more free, but that's not even a fight. It's just hitting two guys while they take a nap. That's not very sporting. I was a little lost in story time Twitch here, so we're gonna kind of jump around with ADHD in the background. Good news, chat seemed to have fun with the stories, so you should come hang out on Twitch if you want to listen to me ramble about a fake college I went to that gave me very real student loan debt. Bully Bogart intentionally, bully Raya accidentally because we jumped. She doesn't like jumping. You think we're gonna do Rykart? Wrong, because we're going to the study hall, then quitting out for the Perceptor. Gonna bring that up every time because I'm not sure when this is gonna be someone's first video and oh my god, quitting out after the Perceptor spawns in to despawn it is such a quality of life improvement for a dungeon that's so annoying. Get the curse mark of death, so obviously we're doing the Fia quest, right? No, we're failing the swag jump twice. You need that footage. I think it's because we didn't kill the beast man throwing knives, not really sure. Bird run goes fine, so obviously it's Malakath next to- No, hug Fia, it's Fortisax time. Yeah, it's unfocused here, sorry gamers. How do you describe Fortisax in an interesting way? You just kinda run into their toes, swing at it when you can, get hit by lightning attacks you don't get to see the animations for because the best place to hit him is the toes. That stops you from seeing the boss, it's just a, it's sloppy. Malakath time, the beast clergy phase is also sloppy. We struggle getting in. The goblins bleed him with a stance break which means we start phase two in a weird place not a problem if anything his flip jump gets easier to punish bleed resistance resets on phase transition so malekith is already primed to leak like a sieve just gotta avoid the attacks with the big tells and we're done gideon next our weapon is long enough we can just walk forward and press r1 sometimes he gets a spell off quick enough but that's what the ritual shield talisman is for and the goblins give us time to heal godfrey next he chucks an axe and we start swinging i'm doing jump attacks because it's fun and it feels like it's in character Character. It also breaks the stance pretty fast, which gets us a crit and pushes him into phase 1.5. Phase 2 starts with a big earthquake. I was a bit worried it would reset his stance, but after it's done, we break him down. Then he goes for phase 2.5, makes the giant shockwaves, and we bleed him to death. If the boss bleeds, it's free. Radagon doesn't bleed, so he's gonna be expensive, right? Not really. The pressure breaks him down once, then he goes for a stomp, which means two free jump attacks, one before he hops, and one after. Fully charged R2 after he cones one of our goblins, and then another stance break then another fully charged attack and a final stance break after the jump but his cone hit us so we don't get to crit goblin finishes him off hell yeah elden beast also can't bleed likes to run around and make aoes so our goblins are fucked one big bombo kills all of them we get smacked by the elden punch embarrassing then it goes for melee attack so we can spin charge punish maybe i should use spinning slash more but i think charge attack works better and does more stance damage could be wrong don't actually even know we get a stance break right after Elden Stars, which isn't ideal, but it isn't unideal. The iframes from a crit will save us from the ticks of the Elden Star. It's all right. Now we just play a game where you run around and chase the big space whale. Does the blade memes? We chase him down. Elden Rain? Chase him down. Big breath? Chase him down. Finally, melee, so we can punish again. And a third massive bombo for the final punish. We've beaten God with the power of Goblin. Now we're Godlin, but there's also a power vacuum. So let's suck up everything else and maintain Goblin and rule. Time for this goblin to fight a dragon and we're bringing a bunch more goblins big teleports aoe's sounds like a problem right it's actually not the little pockets of lightning now have four targets which means we don't have to run away every few seconds and get to just keep swinging for a stance break unfortunately we instantly teleported to a crit not what i wanted i wanted a combo on the head most of the goblins have been thoroughly zapped by the time the tp phase starts but since plassy goes for the long big breath attack we can hit the tail for a second stance break that fast now we just have to bait him into the wall and since he's a dumbass that needs to restart the lightning pockets before the super beam, we get a combo on the tail again. Then he blasts his Omega laser in the wall, and we get a third stance break right at the end. Absolutely absurd how well this is all going. It's simply too good.
Our stats are also too good now, so we're going to respec to an occult build which focuses on the arcane stat. The weapon damage takes only the slightest of hits and will eventually be better than the heavy infusion, but it also doubles the amount of bleed we're getting. Very nice. Castle's hole next, and let's talk about another reason this is leagues better than Garmin. The goblins are just better than Theralene as a spirit ash. They're more aggressive to distract better and stack massive bleed, which works well against most bosses. Sure, they're squishy, but dying fast isn't an issue if they help make the boss die fast. Niall does his omega attack, it's just a free punish, then we copy our goblin brethren and jump all around over the lightning. Whenever you do the Nile fight smoothly, it feels so freaking cool. Bully an old man next, then run through some goblins on the hidden path. They have death juice on their weapon, and we can't get that. Don't love it, but it's not like we need it. Also, they use Beast Claw, and the reason we're not using Beast Claw is because we don't need to. It's just a waste of time to go get it. Just because I put it on the cast list of Caster Pass doesn't mean it's better than a weapon. It just means it's like technically usable to get through the game. Penguin Noble has leveled up. Now it takes four spins to kill him. Nice progress, buddy. Run through Mogwin Palace and Mog is weak to bleed. Remember how I said we doubled our bleed ticks? It's free real estate. One, two, three bleeds before a stance break. Then a fourth before phase two. God damn. He does take reduced damage from a bleed as opposed to other bosses, but it is still just carving through him. One of our goblins gets a fifth bleed on him, and they're all lasting a surprisingly long time in phase two, considering how much splatoon juice Moog is spraying everywhere. Last little bit of health, we're alone, but all we need is just a little patience, and the blood god bleeds out. Liturgical Town is more than fine. It's cool. We dodge the arrows better than a white guy dodges consequences for his actions, meaning successfully and with very little effort on our end. No issues in the Hallig Tree either, just kill the snail before the ghost rock monster it summons can shoot you with its magic shotgun. Swag jump success, I wasn't distracted this time, and we can fight Royal Knight Loretta. This one bleeds, and has more health and damage, but that damage isn't an issue if she's not alive. Her wounds just never have a second to heal, and when she does the super spin, it's over. Sorry girl, maybe you should have a saw halberd instead of a blue one. Raya gets bullied with jumping again, I'm so sorry. Then the Godskin Noble kind of combos us. Is this going to go bad? No, not at all. The goblins just needed to catch up. We stance break and don't get a crit, but everyone's taking a turn swinging and absolutely melts the marshmallow man. Stay puffed, nerd. Rykard could be an issue. I found a great way to avoid the earthquake, though. Just run into the lava. Maybe we shouldn't have brought the goblins out here, but I'm not using my mana for anything else. Who gives a shit? They get some hits in. The reach of the saw blade means we can hit the snake decently well, and the bleed actually does good damage. We get a stance break at the end of phase one, but I slow down. Instead, I wait for him to recover, then jump attack a few times for max stance pressure going into phase two. If I can avoid hell phase, I'll be very happy. Bleed early, stance break early, this is what I'm aiming for. Now, I know I mention this every time, but Rykard's body is wrong in phase two. Longer weapons like halberds make it easier, but it's not really guaranteed. It does let us keep the pressure up to stance break him out of hell phase, only for him to activate hell phase instantly when he wakes up. Bummer. <laughs> But since his health is low, it's just a few more hits to make him bring out the snake. And that means it's a free fight now. Before the snake is out, Rykard wants to back up with every swing, pulling his body out of your potential hitbox. When the snake starts biting, his body pushes forward so you can hit him. We end by making his face bleed. It's rad. LFL time. We only have one boss left and y'all know she's a doozy. Oh, and the spiders kill us on the way down too, but that's only our ninth total death. We've only died to one boss, Fia's champs, like three hours ago. The rest of our deaths are silly gravity or farming deaths from when we didn't have our build together. I know Melania is only free if you bring a whole bunch of cheese, but maybe this build's so solid, it at least gets a discount. First attempt got a runaway to bring the goblins out. It's a risky move. They could just be juice boxes for her self-healing. Group ashes tend to be. Bleed is a great way to counteract her lifelink though. Her poise is also pretty low. So I'm pushing forward, getting that bleed until we get the stance break. She didn't like that and activates the ducky dance, but we're living. The goblins are doing just fine by the way. Their little hits don't seem to be drawing her aggro and it keeps the stance pressure up for another stance break. First try and phase two is a go. The onion melts down the goblins, but that's actually good. She doesn't heal off the first onion. Now when she duckies, them, yeah, she goes to full health. That's the duckin' 
same problem. Our only option now is to solo the harder phase. Using the reach of the saw is helping us get some hits off here and there, but like, where are the punish windows supposed to be in this fight? Half of her moves straight up don't let you attack her. She has the wake up kick. It's annoying. Stance break puts her at half health, but then she pulls out the clone whirlwind at melee distance and we live? Holy shit. No flasks left as she heads into her second onion. I'm trying to get some spinning slashes off on her. We get another bleed. Sadly, no healing. So we die. Rip. Attempt to realize we don't need the blue juice if we never use it. Bring in the goblins. She's walking forward now. We whiff the opening jump and get flurried. Bad start, dude. Bleed quickly fixes that up though, as does the stance pressure we're putting on, allowing for a nice early crit. Another bleed back up and take a hefty amount of damage from the ducky dance, but don't die. If you don't die, who cares? The dash attack gets us to phase two. I'm rooting for the onion to kill the goblins at this point. Doesn't really matter if she just kills us too fast anyway. Number three that's a lucky number right i don't think so because after a nice early stance break she duckies the goblins look at that healing i don't like that maybe it'll be good though if the goblins bite it early in phase two they won't be there to heal her up a bleed crit is fine when she's at 30 percent. i just don't want it to make her hit zero since the fight is broken and she can't be crit into phase two the last goblin dies at the first onion and we're alone i think that's good early bleed and she wants to attack of the clones that's not much i can do to punish that onion number two love that it's a free charged attack. This is looking really good, y'all. It could be the fight. Another bleed. She is so low. Whiffs the grab and melee clones. I have no idea how to live this up close. It's worse than the ducky dance even, at least at close range. Number four, hey, that's how many total goblins they are. Maybe that means something, I don't know. Bleed and stance breaks early, she hits half health really fast. Don't know why I think trading is an okay strat. I guess it's the bleed probably, right? We bait the ducky dance away from the kids so no one ends up taking damage. Punish the lunge and get one more bleed before phase two. Wait out the onion, the goblins don't so they're keeping the pressure up while losing HP she can use to heal off of. It's pretty nice. A stance break would be huge if the bleed didn't immediately knock her out of it god damn it close attack of the clones again i decided just flask tank and that pays off we're in the second onion and spin her up for some big stance pressure clones again letting her heal all of that off isn't that nice seems nice i just really have no idea where i'm supposed to ever attack her another break but we have to heal with our last flask our health is low so is hers Play it safe, just don't get greedy, wait for those non-existent windows, and there we go. At six hours and nine minutes. Nice. We killed 34 bosses and only died 12 times. That puts us in S tier right behind Harley Quinn, who notably did not have to do all membies. This is the second strongest secret starting class, only behind Bloodhound Knight. How? Number one, the goblins. These little dudes pull their weight and much more because they don't weigh a lot. If the fanged imps are good because they build up bleed and there's two of them, this is 30% better. Amazing. Number two, the vulgar saw is a solid weapon. It's basically an uchi katana on a stick and that stick might slow it down, but it also gives you extra reach to hit harder to reach bosses and keeps you further away from them. Finally, we have so many extra stats. So we get to invest big in endurance and vigor for more swings, lighter load, and to take more swings from the bosses. Really, the only weakness here is the hour it's spent farming. Take that out, and the vulgar militia are the fucking goats. Thanks for watching. If you want to watch surprisingly strong runs live, follow me on Twitch. We're finding new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Join the Patreon if you want to support the channel and watch some exclusive videos. And make sure you're subscribed so this video doesn't shit the bed.